Hey, honey. Yeah? How do we know if we're ghosts? I don't know. We don't take ghost poops. So they would be ghost poops? Well, how does one take a ghost poop? That's something... D do ghosts just, like, inherently know all this knowledge, or...? I guess that you get this brochure, like, you do, like... Not like hospitals and whatnot, when you get a baby. Like, what to expect when you're becoming a ghost? Maybe. Mm. I mean, that's that's one way of putting it. Yeah. Also, honey? Yeah? Honey, I think I have some bad news for you. What? I think we're ghosts. Okay. Neat. Yeah. All right. Hey everybody, it's Baron J and I talk fast, very fast. I would say that I have a silver tongue, but I think a tongue made out of silver would almost completely remove my ability to speak and thus impede my fast talking nature, so I've always wondered why people say that. I'm beginning to feel a little bit like a rap god. I've talked before about shows like the Monogatari series and Katana Gatari, where the dialogue is very important and goes by as fast as it can and you're left trying to figure out what the hell they just said. I love these shows because I like to read. Today I'm talking about another show that impressed with some of its wordplay wizardry with the visuals and plot to bring the bamboozlement. Now, Occultic 9 is part of the adjective semicolon noun universe like Steins Gate, Chaos, Head, Robotics Notes, and all of that other shit. Now, some of these are known for being wordy. If you're familiar familiar with them, but Occultic 9 takes the cake. Now having just said that, it's worth noting Occultic 9 is written by Chiyomaru Shikura, the creator of Steins Gate. Now this is kind of weird though, unlike Steins Gate, the game adaptation was announced in 2015, so having the anime come out before that is actually kind of interesting. Now typically I'd go through a lot of the staff and things like that and try to find who, who really stands out in a lot of this, but really the only guy you have to look out for in the entire staff of this show is the director, who is Kyohei Ishiguro, otherwise known as the guy that directed Your Lie in April. So the story here starts with Yuta Gamon, uh, aka Gamotan, and his friend, a giant pair of breasts named Ryoka Narasawa. So this is not supposed to be a sexist comment or anything, it's not some sort of commentary on feminism or something in anime. I'm just saying literally this woman is 90% like 90% anime titty. Most of her body mass is titty. She is his assistant and occasionally uses a stun gun on him for kicks. They also hang out in this gay guy's lounge bar thing. Meanwhile, at his school, there's a guy who's pissed because everyone is making fun of his dad, who's a paranormal scientist, and then one of the girls there also participates in a live stream where she accurately predicts people's future. Also, there's this other chick who works as a paranormal journalist, and she hears an intriguing lead while this little girl apparently runs a business in Moida. So Occultic 9 is understandably a little bit difficult to follow at first, and by a little bit difficult, I mean, por que es difícil? They throw so many characters and concepts at you in the first episode that it might feel a little bit like Anime Primer. And this is coming from the same universe and writer as Anime Primer. Occultic 9 is a bunch of interweaving stories about nine people that are all linked to one plot that serves to change the world forever. So, what is there to say about Occultic 9? That's pretty neat. Dialogue and fast pacing aside, the art is phenomenal. There's this soft overlay they use for whatever reason, though, that makes me feel like I'm incredibly far-sighted and getting really old. You remember Samurai Jack? Sam Samurai Jack? Back to the past, back to the past Samurai Jack? He yeah, I, I, it's coming back soon, obviously. Everyone's really excited about it. But I went back and remembered, I remember watching that show when it aired. I remember watching the movie, and I went and thought to myself, how, how old was that? 2001. 2001. That was 16 years ago. Jesus Christ, I'm old. Every environment, though, is beautifully drawn and honestly feels more like it's painted. The attention to detail and lighting are great, and the animation does tend to complement this. The only thing that may offset all of it is the jarring cuts in between certain scenes. Now, here's a little bit of an example. I've changed the angle. Uh, everything's at a different angle now. It's kind of like, oh, uh, we're over here now. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And, and boom, here we are. We're in my kitchen. Everything's in color. I'm not wearing my glasses. This is weird, right? You shouldn't fucking do this. It doesn't make sense. Now, as far as the plot, the story itself is really interesting. It's one of those stories that allows you to infer certain things about its structure, but ultimately twists your concept of how it's actually playing out. I remember being so confused at the end of some of these episodes in a good way. Now, my complaints really lie in how this story is executed. There is a lot of coherence to it, while there are some nice asides and an awesome reference to Steinsgate, but in the end, the 
journey there is probably way too confusing to most people. I would only really recommend this show to people who are fans of really wordy anime like the Monogatari series and if you can follow similarly quick and verbose dialogue. All in all, Occultic 9 is a pretty good show and has a lot of really cool stylization that makes it really unique, but be aware of the complicated nature of the show before going in. Then, you might stand a ghost of a chance. Thanks for watching, everybody. It was really awesome to see all the support that I got from my Patreon. I'm, I'm actually genuinely surprised. I, I was not expecting to hit my stretch goals at all, and I already hit one of them. So I'm just sitting here going, great, now what do I do? Um, I don't have my voice lines that I would read out for this video yet, but if you do support my Patreon, uh, if you go at the 10 or $20 level, I believe, I get to say whatever line you would in my videos. So that would be what would be taking up this time. I do want to give a huge shout out to JKW and Chaotic Sloth, who are my first big Patreon subscribers. Those are the guys that uh, did the $10 level, and I would be calling them out, but uh, they don't have anything for me yet, so I just kind of said, I'll just say their names out loud. That way they feel, they feel good about it. You guys are cool. It's really awesome to see all you guys showing your support. I love every single one of almost 7,000 of you. That's coming up soon, so... Uh, maybe look forward to something with the word seven in the name in the future. Wonder what that could be. So yeah, I'm actually changing some stuff up for a bit with my end slate. I'm using YouTube's new end card feature, so there will be 20 seconds where stuff will be up on the screen instead of, you know, being through the entire part of me talking at the end of the video. As always, thanks guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>